Welcome back. Today we're going to delve into the first deviation of New Game Plus. Over that way was where Sydney and Gildenstern had their little altercation. And here, I already activated that door, but the blood sin on Ashley's back burns, and it unlocks it. Even though you can't see it on his model, he still has the uh, blood sin from the end of the first playthrough. It's not an inventory item. It basically acts like a, a multi-use sigil. Rather than a key, since once the door is open, you don't have the little prompter saying you've used the key again. And as you can see, the doors that Blood Sin activate have some nasty tricks behind them. It's nothing that Ashley can't handle, but this is at least like four, four boss fights before you start seeing witches and the Lich Lord being an endgame enemy. This little excursion is just to, to whet your appetite. Unfortunately, we can't really do anything this, aside from just accumulate map percentage. Just a reminder, traps can't kill you, but obviously anything left in the room when you activate a trap certainly can. And here's what happens when you actually reach such a door. These liches don't, I don't believe, have any particularly special drops. I think one of them might drop a Gaia Strike, which then you can use to level up that attack spell. And unfortunately, as you can see, there is nothing you can do after uh, after this. The little mini-map shows a locked door. So we can go no further. And with the silver key, it will take quite some time before we can open that one. So let's go down to the other side of the Undercity, where we can actually progress. Since the crab is vulnerable to blunt, I've decided to uh, dust off the old knuckles. Can't do anything with the mouth. But the other chitinous, yes, chitinous bits are quite vulnerable. Not doing much damage, but don't really need to. I suppose I should have actually showed his stupid little bubbles to tap.
Maybe next playthrough I should actually bring along a shillelagh or other stave. Need to level those things up as well. Now that is a nice roll. Anyway, here we are back in the Snowflat Forest. It was brought to my attention that possibly Rosencrantz's hint about following the Snowflies might figure in into first-person view. Um, that is the wrong way, and this is the right way. And at least at first glance, there isn't really any significant difference. And I, actually, I take it back. There technically isn't a wrong way. It's uh, different values of uh, direct ways. Anyway, let's just go and uh, fight this jerk. Since I wasn't afraid of his breath attack, I just ran head on in uh, regular mode and made it nice, nice and under his neck before he could do anything. With all the armor and other stat boosts that I've gotten between now and the first playthrough, I'm taking about half as much damage as before. And as you may remember, the Earth Dragon was immune to the fun debuffs, so I have five groups. And just a reminder, the, with the exception of the area of effect attack spells, once you have a spell it can't be leveled up or anything. And even those, those that can be leveled up can only be done four times, so. So the flame sphere is at max level right now. Haven't shown this off in the first time. Taking this path takes you back to the Undercity entrance. Now let's complete the uh, map of the Snowfly Forest since I'll need to do that sooner or later. First, just a little jump into that corner to, uh, to mark that as present. Next we will go to the left. I didn't think of this in the first playthrough. The Ichthyotuthis is available in this zone, 
Obviously, as you saw, they still drop fairy wings, so if you really wanted to, you could farm for one and get underneath the earth dragon with your weapons drawn. And for very few exceptions, I am going to be facing south, or the camera will be facing south in the event that you want to follow along and not open up a guide or whatever, which is what, if that is what you want. Three in a row. Quite surprised at that. This is just, uh, it's not a dead end, it'll loop back to an area that we've already been to. I just decided to pop up the status. I was, I was quite surprised that Fanes and Lamekin didn't have, uh, named, weren't named as the, uh, enemies you're fighting. I thought that other named NPCs who became zombies had a na name in the status screen, but... Apparently not. Wrong button. Take a drink. Debating about the Night Killer. Really, really don't use the 20% uh, boost to accuracy or boost to evasion sh gems, but, well, can't hurt to take them. At this point I was flirting with keeping the camera f pointing south, but I'd rather have it to my back for this part. Just a weird preference. So instead of carrying forward, or hang a left, these two zones, if you take the wrong way, that leads to a one-way path that uh, dumps you into the yeah eastern side so just make a quick sortie into one direction and be done with it and spare yourself getting lost I made a mistake uh, and tried to proceed, whereas I can go this direction and do some more map completion. There's two different ways to go. I should have taken a right first, but oh well. This is a uh, very particular space to get to. It's uh, filled with a whole bunch of one-way outflow, so you you show up in one direction and you're gonna end up going somewhere that you can't make your way back to after, uh, after you zone out. So here we are back again, where I should have went in the first place. Took a right. Oh, man, really bad at it. And that was it. Everything else was uh, the same as getting out. Let's do some interesting things in this fight. I forgot, like I was thinking about, is making a beeline to the chest. And uh, instead of thought of something else that I would not be able to do until next playthrough.
unfortunately, I intended to load up the Hellbird with Perilous Gems, but I cancelled instead of confirmed, so right now I've got a weapon filled with Dragonite. Still tearing him to pieces, so I'm not, not really that upset about it, of course. In absolutely no danger, so let's just play with uh, chain attacks to, to build up that pointless phantom shield. And that will be it. Seems an awful shame to uh, to change weapons right now. I mean, I thought I had a human killer. I was wrong, but my intention was to have one, and it's like, ah, oh, it's such a waste. I don't want to change weapons right away, so let's go kill Sydney. Well, obviously, uh, the game has made uh, precautions against it. Pretty good chain evade, so... In, in a normal playthrough, you don't really want to, uh, to get rid of your only friendly uh, NPC that you don't have to heal to brainwash or anything. You can cast heal, he can buff you up, so it's like, you really don't want to do that on the first playthrough. This time, though, let's just show what happens if, if the armor or Grissom take offense to Sydney and kill him. That wasn't editing on my part, actually. He just suddenly decided he wanted to face left, and he just zones out. Kind of important to the plot, so you can't uh, cause a time paradox or anything. It's quite strange how the Wakazashi is considerably stronger than the Katana. Oh well. I myself prefer a Wakazashi. Anyway, after uh, after beating this, again, I don't really care about most of this junk. Take another Demona, even though I don't need it anymore. Don't need any of that junk. And Sydney just pops right back up, as if nothing happened. And remember, like I said, even though a, a very large percentage of stuff is going to be useless in chests, you still want to take it on the second playthrough, if you're a achievement-hungry, crazy person like I am. Another thing I neglected to uh, demonstrate in the first playthrough. Rosencrantz's plot armor against magic does translate into battle immunity. Point. So single target magic, area of effect magic, 0% chance to hit and 0 damage, even if it somehow did hit. And that includes combat magic, buffs, debuffs. He's just not going to take that. Status ailments, no. Uh, Enchanter is only uh, self-target, so that's kind of pointless. Can't even heal him. I should have, upon thinking now, nailed him with with a cursed umbra to see if if a status effect applied by Breakart would uh, override. But 
And as you can see from the damage, it's not that big of a deal. And this one I did actually lay on the Herolus gem, so... And this time, uh, while I did show that you can go and face the Dark Elemental in the previous playthrough, just doesn't feel right to me. So I'm going to just go straight through the uh, abandoned mines this way and swing back around to the other side of the Undercity later. Let me show you how it's done. So that's it. I'm gonna take his, uh, his booty and lay it against a slime in the next room. And after that I will see you next time as I uh, curb stomp some more bosses. See you next time.